It's time to go over every single cent we spent in 2018 and put it in a budget category and take our totals and figure out if we were under our budget percentages or over our budget percentages. And I know you want to know if we were under or over in the lifestyle category because it's like six things in our budget. So I'm going to talk about the categories that I don't normally talk about too, like our income and our giving. If you're interested in seeing the budget percentages for my household compared to the every dollar recommended budget percentages, let's go ahead and jump on in. Hey guys, it's Wendy Valencia. I am going over our budget percentages today. And I'll be honest, it took me a while to add these up because I mean, like my budgets are detailed every month. I mean, check this out. This is just one budget. So our first category is going to be our income because you can't do a budget without an income. And of course, the income is going to be 100% obviously, because it's the incomes. This is what we brought home to our bank account. This does not include things that were taken out prior to reaching our bank account, like taxes and medical. And we actually have a couple of uh, debt payments that are directly out of my paycheck. They get sent straight to the bank. In 2018, Mauricio and I brought home 180000 $10 and 79 cents. And that is what entered our bank account. That is the amount of money we use to operate with each month. Well, 180,000, not each month. I wish. No, that 180,000 was divided up to 12 months out of the year. So our first category is our housing category, which is supposed to encompass 25 to 35% of your income. And of course, we live with my parents, so obviously our housing is going to be under. In the housing category, we spent in 12 months a total of $3,240 for a total of 1.8% of our budget. Way under, of course, but we all knew that was going to be under. And what was that $3,000 you ask? That was our storage unit. And I know because you're looking at the total right now going, she spent $3,000 on a storage unit and this is her third year of having that storage unit. That's $9,000. Well, let me tell you, $9,000 doesn't even really cover the value of my dining room furniture. So I'm still okay with it. And in our utilities category, a category that is supposed to be between 5 and 10% of your budget, we spent $2,440.91 for a total of 1.36% of our budget. The utilities category was way under because we don't have real utilities. We just really pay for our cell phones and our Skype bill. The next category is food, which is supposed to be 10 to 15%. Now, I actually think 10 to 15%, 15% would be ridiculous. 10% is a little on the higher side, in my opinion. I feel like no matter the area you live in or your income, food should be kind of like fixed depending on the cost of food for your local area. So for us, it might be five to $600 a month. Unless you eat out a lot, then it might go up to eight or 900. But still, eight or 900 would be well below 10% of my budget. So in our food category, we spent... $11,950.23 for a total of 6.6% .6 of our budget. Woohoo! Under, under, under. We were under. I actually was a little bit worried about this because if you do a survey of our category that shall not be named, there are two things on it. Amazon and food. Always. So... I was a little concerned, but we were way under and I am very happy about that. But once I started totaling it up and realized that we had spent $11,000 on food last year, I was like, oh, I actually recommend that everybody do this because seriously, it is mind blowing when you start looking at the actual numbers to figure out exactly how much you have spent. 
in a year. The next category is transportation, which is supposed to be 10 to 15% of the budget. And we spent $3,119.83 for a total of 1.73% of our budget. Woohoo! Now I will tell you, you can actually debate whether like a car loan should go in the transportation category and whether a car maintenance sinking fund should go in the transportation category. But we opted to put them in other places in the budget. So I feel like this budget, the way I did it, could be subjective. But either way, even if we added the car in, it would still be well below 10%. The next category is the insurance and tax category, which is 10 to 15% of your budget. And we spent $4,579.42 for a grand total of 2.54%. We are killing it so far, but I'll admit these are not areas of the budget we normally have major issues with, except for food. And I've always known that our food was well under the recommended percentage. The next category is the scary category for us, because as you all know, we had a horrific health year. Horrific. It just one thing after another, after another, after another. And our bills were redonkulous every month. So the health category, which is supposed to be five to 10% of your budget, uh, a little scared. Our health category was $13,423.25 for a grand total of 7.46%. Whoa. We actually were right in the middle of that. I am shocked and really glad that it wasn't 10% because that would have been a lot more money. In the savings category, which is not technically savings in the traditional savings sense, it's more our sinking fund. But you know, our goal is to pay off debt as quickly as possible. So we are going to be putting as little as possible to savings right now. The savings category is recommended to be 10 to 15%. And we saved $14,960 for a grand total of 8.5%. Three one percent. I am shocked by this. I was sure we were going to hit the 10% mark for savings. I really, really felt like every month we were, you know, socking a lot away. But in truth, we didn't start saving for that Columbia trip until the end. And again, this isn't real savings. This is just us planning for stuff. It's really us responsibly budgeting. So we're going to talk about lifestyle and then we're going to talk about giving. Yep. I'm going to talk about how much money we gave in 2018. A little nervous. In the lifestyle category, which is supposed to be 15 to 25% of your budget, I actually broke this down into three separate categories. I broke it down into general lifestyle, which is the stuff I buy, child care, because why is child care a lifestyle choice? In this area, two parents work. Houses are expensive. You always have to have two parents working. It's not really a lifestyle choice because you can't really live in this area if two parents don't work. And the final category is the YouTube category. I debate about whether this is a lifestyle choice or a business investment. So that's why I separated it out. And I'm going to be doing a total of all three subsections at the end so you can see how much we spent overall in the recommended every dollar lifestyle category. So in the general lifestyle category, we spent $21,705.63 for a grand total of 12.6%. Whoa. That's ugly. This one is everything non-food. And there's a lot of shopping in there, I will admit. Not $21,000 of random shopping because a lot of it was necessities, such as clothes. Clothes, especially when you have a growing child, are a necessity. The next category of the lifestyle category is child care. And we spent $10,000. $888.60 
for a total of 6.5% of our budget. That's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I felt like we spent a lot because, you know, summer camp and all of that, but it's actually not nearly as bad as I thought. Yeah, so now we're already over that 15%. The question is, are we going to be under the 25? So let's go over the YouTube category. In the YouTube category, we spent a total of $1,802.97 for a grand total of 1% of our budget for a grand total of 19.11% of our budget. Woo yes, I said it. We are under the top side of the lifestyle category. The whole reason I actually am doing these percentages is for this category because there is a lot of judgment out in YouTube land about how much people actually spend. And I have a healthy budget and I know I have a healthy budget and I'm actually happy with our healthy budget. But I will tell you that knowing that I haven't even reached the maximum recommended amount for lifestyle makes me feel really, really good. And if you are a YouTuber and you are putting your numbers out there, consider talking about your percentages because I think YouTube land needs to understand that it is okay to spend money. It's okay to be frugal and it's okay to spend money. It's all up to you and your decisions in your life as to what you spend. And this is me stepping down from my soapbox. <laughs> If you start thinking about your categories in percentages rather than dollars and cents, one, it eliminates the stress of comparison between your salary and my salary and your debt and my debt. It's all about percentages. Two, it shows you that we're just like everybody else. The giving category, the category that I never talk about on my channel because I don't want to be judged for it but I'm going to talk about it. And I have vowed in 2019 to talk more about my income and my giving category and be completely transparent with you. Okay, not completely. I probably will not tell you where we're giving or to whom or how much exactly, but I'll give you the totals, which is a step in the right direction, right? And don't forget to stick around for the debt category because that's awesome. So the giving category is supposed to be 10 to 15 percent. So in our giving category, we gave $14,670.51 for a grand total of 8.15 percent of our budget. Now, if you have followed me for a hot second, you do know that giving is the area that Mauricio and I are the weakest. So the mere fact that we kept it under 10% is amazing. And I am really happy with this number because I still feel like I gave sufficiently throughout the year. So the final category. Dun, dun, dun. So this year to debt, as I said before, we paid $79,680.99 for a grand total of 42.82% of our income. Now, for the last three years, I have actually tried to get our debt payments to be 50% and not succeeded every year. So I think I need to just be happy that it's over 40%. That's pretty stellar in my book. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya. We're out.